Hello, welcome to another Looney Tunes video. Not a commentary this time. Um, this is going to be just a, a discussion on the director, Norm McCabe. Usually we do this sort of stuff at the end of commentaries, but given that Norm McCabe's last directed short was Tokyo Jokyo, I didn't really want to attach this at the end of that. So I figure those who want to see Tokyo Jokyo, they can do that and then watch this video. And those who don't want to see it, they can just come straight to this video where we're discussing Norm McCabe. And with me today to discuss who I think is underrated somewhat as a director um, is Austin Kelly. Say hi. How you doing? Uh, we just got out from recording Tokyo Jokyo and Anthony was just like, no, we're not, we're not going to do the discussion here. I mean, let's be honest, there are going to be a lot of people who skip that one. So, I mean, it's an obvious choice. And understandably. Be... Yep. Yeah, of course. And I completely course. understand it because um, I, I know that's certain cartoons pe people just aren't interested in watching you know they're either the really controversial ones such as this or Porky's Cafe which is a really, really low ranking video but anyway that's fine so um, hint hint go watch Porky's Cafe get those views up for me yeah alright <laughs> so uh, to start off with um, we, we, you know, as, as we've done before is we'll just have a bit of a chat about Norm McCabe uh, before he started directing. So as I understand it, Austin, he was in Clampett's unit, but was he in any other units beforehand or? Uh, yes, he was an animator in the Tashlin unit before that. Uh, you know, documentation in general for Warner cartoons is scarce and like 30s Warner cartoons, forget it. So no one really knows when he joined or when he left and what he worked on before that. But he did join the Harmonizing Studio as an in-betweener in 32, and in 36 he was the full animator in uh, Frank Tashlin's unit, and uh, of course moved over to the Clampett unit around the same time, uh, you know, Up Iris uh, does those few cartoons for the studio. Yeah. Uh, with you know, those uh, wonderful cartoons, which I know are some of your your favourites, um, <laughs> but uh, and and, I'll, and there will be a link as well in in the description below to Cartoon Research. My good friend Devin Baxter, he wrote this um, really uh, really great article about Norm McCabe. So some of the info will come from here. I mean, the research is there. So um, and he and he has given me permission to use this. So thank you so much, Devin, for uh, letting us use some of this uh, well researched information. But um, so, so pretty much at one point, Clampett did, did get sick and therefore Norm McCabe would co-direct two cartoons. So I think we can start off with his directing career right there. I mean, with the uh, Timid Toreador. Uh, that one was a childhood favorite, although I still had no idea what the tamale was, you know, and I was even seeing hot tamales, hot tamales, and I was, don't even know what... They were. I just knew that there was something hot, and that was it. And yeah, it's a nice cartoon. I mean, it, it it's definitely more of a clab cartoon anyway. You don't see much of Norm stuff in there. I mean, what are your thoughts on Tim and Toriador? Yeah, I mean, you kind of summed it up. Uh, I don't really know uh, how much involvement McCabe actually had in that one. Uh, I'm assuming the character layouts were probably done, and he might have just uh, generally directed the animators how to do a scene. Uh, McCabe himself does some nice animation in that one, but uh, that's all I really have to say about it. Definitely more of a Clamper cartoon than uh, McCabe. Uh, I think it's just okay. Not one of my favorites, hmm. but it's uh, definitely more enjoyable than like Africa Squeaks or like some stupid autopilot Clamper cartoon from the same era, you know? Mm, I mean, speaking of autopilot, uh, we, the next one up is uh, Porky Snooze Reel. And, you know, I will say I do like that Lou Lear Porky that happens in that in that one if i'm remembering correctly that just yep. showcases mel blank's vocal skills pretty well i mean yeah as with any spot gag short you know it's it's got its hits it's got its misses but this one's okay i, I don't mind it i mean what are your thoughts on snooze reel i mean you know i, I kind of like it there's actually some really nice uh, solid animation in there by uh, john carey and mccabe himself uh you know, clearly a lot of guys were under the influence of Tex Avery, who was, you know, technically still working at the studio, though he wouldn't be for uh, much longer at that point. Obviously, he kind of, I don't know if you want to say he invented the spot gag cartoon. He probably did in some way, uh, or less, at least to help popularize it. But he did a lot of those orners. Clearly, this is like an attempt to do uh, 
Avery type thing. Freeling does a lot of those around the same time. Pretty good. Some nice animation. Uh, actually, might be one of my favorite of the black and white porkies, but uh, we all have our opinions. I get why you might not love it. Of course. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, but now, of course, Clamper comes back because with those two shorts, Clamper was um, had to take a leave of absence because he was sick. He you know, comes back not long after, you know, directs some more cartoons, and then he himself go- takes over, takes Avery's unit, and which frees up Clamper's old unit, and Norm starts directing, and his first short is Robinson Crusoe Jr., which, you, you know, which isn't too bad, you know, it feels like what Clampett was doing roughly the same time. Uh, nothing too special. A few nice gags, some nice songs, but I don't know. It's, it's okay. I mean, what, what are your thoughts on Robinson? I, I don't know why, but this cartoon looks like it had a higher budget than the others because it's got these amazing backgrounds and all kinds of funky character designs. Um, no, I, I actually kind of enjoy this one. It's got, like, some of the best Carl Stalling music ever. I mean, uh, Greg Ford, I know... Uh, highlighted a lot of it on his uh, Carl Stalling project albums. So, you know, it's definitely considered the great cartoon for Stalling and whoever the background artist might have been around the same time uh, in the unit. But, uh, you know, not really that funny, but it's a gorgeous cartoon, uh, both visually and uh, to the ears. Hmm. Yeah, I, I do agree. It is nice to look at. I, I guess maybe when I saw it, it didn't, wasn't the greatest thing. I guess when you watch these things one after another, it kind of... A lot of it sort of blends together as well. But uh, the next one, Who's Who in the Zoo, which, again, spot gag short, you know, getting, getting Porky out of the way as well, pretty much early on, as well as what was what tended to happen around this time. And I believe also Chuck Jones, uh, I think you, you took, you're the one that told me this, um, helped out with this one. You know, a few nice gags. I, don't, I didn't mind this one. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on Who's Who? Uh, first off, yes, uh, Jones um, did help out uh, with the character layouts on this cartoon. Uh, he might have done some character layouts on other uh, McCabe cartoons. I don't want to uh, say anything because I'm not really sure as to which he might have worked on, but probably some around the same time, if anything, some of the earlier ones. Uh, but I do like this one. There's some really funny gags, uh, but it's really funny or it's really dull and i think some of the gags probably just gave like uncomfortable smiles to the theater because they were just so like cringeworthy it's it's not one of my favorites but it does have some bright spots like most of the uh spot gags of course now now the next one i love Daff, daffy southern exposure and uh, uh, you'll probably notice a theme here, but I think Norm McKay works with Daffy so, so well. I just think his, yeah, Daffy shorts are, are amazing. And this one's no exception. Now, of course, as a kid, the big highlight for me was the whole beans scene. You know, beans, 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 nothing but beans and all that. And of course, you know, beans are funny because they make you do something, don't they? <laughs> but, um, the, but look, the animation's nice. The, uh, the gags are, are hilarious. I just love the, the wolf and this weasel just one of the characters and it's quite clear there's also a bit of a war influence there as well because of the whole um southern the good neighbor policy so they had, had a th- had the um uh south american theme at the end but i love it it's, it's it's a childhood favorite i mean what are your thoughts on southern exposure yeah it's a it's a big childhood favorite kind of personal anecdote here but i always grew up watching like a redrawn print and then I found an actual black and white copy and I saw, you know, like that amazing John Kerry and Cal Dalton animation. And I was just literally blown away. And, you know, McCabe is often cited as being the guy who really was the first to give Daffy three dimensions and make him more than just this screwball comic relief weirdo. And I think that really shows. I mean, he goes through literal turmoil here. He's, he's a... You know, he's got all sorts of feelings and emotions, and he's not just a screwy duck. It's 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 a classic, I think, and so are the other two Daffies he did. Yeah, definitely. Next one, Hobby Horse Laughs. Unfortunately, I thought it was a bit a little bit of a dud. I mean, it looks good. It's got some great animation in it, and you know, a few few gags getting a bit of a chuckle. The problem is, I think this short only really works if you were a really really familiar with the radio shows at the time, and I'm only sort of knowledgeable on certain parts, but a lot of it will go over my head. It will go over most people's heads today. Uh, but yeah, 
I, I thought it was a bit of a dud. I mean, what are your thoughts on Hobby Horse Laughs? Yeah, I generally think the same way. Uh, I don't know why McCabe decided to do so many spot gag cartoons. I mean, my only guess is maybe he was just a little nervous as uh, a new director and kind of just stuck to a uh, formula that was uh, proven to be successful because, you know, Avery did all those spot gag cartoons. But uh, no, I really don't care for this one. Like you said, some nice animation, as always, in the McCabe cartoons. But uh, no, not, not one of my favorites. It's a dud. Yeah. And go for Goofy, we all know that this concept is done better later on, but here, got, got, got some great animation of the of the gardener, especially how he just gets more and more deranged as the, the short goes on. I mean, it's not a classic, but i got to admit, when, when watching it, I, I found myself just chuckling at this <laughs> gardener that's just going absolutely insane <laughs> in it. But otherwise, I think the... the the Goofy Gophers, when it was redone later on, were a lot better, but that's just me. I mean, what, what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I, well, I don't mind this one. I, I really like the voice acting. Um, you know, I think it's uh, nothing special. Like you said, some really nice animation. Uh, shout out to John Carey, who uh, is the star of weaker McCabe cartoons like this and, and weaker early black and white clampets. I discuss him all the time on my regular channel on my old Magic of Freeze Framing series, and you bet I will get around to him soon on the, the series I'm doing for Anthony now. But uh, no, not one of my favorites, but like I said, just, uh, animation is really good. Mm, and you can see it on Patreon Max, they've uh, restored some of these too, which, which is good, and you can see with great clarity that uh, you couldn't before in those fuzzy public domain tapes and, and all that stuff, and colorized too. Uh, now, the next one could well be my favorite, if not one of my favorites anyway, for Norman Cave, is actually the Ducktators. And see, unlike Tokyo Jokyo, at least with this one, it's a full on World War II theme short, but it's clever. Of course, it uses animals. I mean, it's no, not nothing too original. I mean, Animal Farm, this similar things and, and all that. But I thought, I thought it was pretty clever. I mean, yes, yeah, some of the, there's some stereotypes and all that stuff, but. I found myself laughing at it. I thought it was clever. Um, and it was one of his well best directed shorts. But what are your thoughts on the Ducktators? Mm. Oh, no, I, I absolutely agree. This has uh, always been a personal favorite. I just think <laughs> Hitler as a duck is such a stupidly funny idea. It's just comparing all these idiots to, like, birds. I think it's amazing. It's, it's really genius. And I wish who I knew who originally came up with the idea of comparing these vile, awful people to low, dirty, average birds. Because it's genius, but it's also really funny, and it works. It's a thing that's, like, lost to, to time, because, you know, all the animators and directors would get together and they'd start pitching ideas for all the storyboards and the cartoons. So, I mean, I wish I knew who came up with that. But no, it's, it's a genius cartoon, some amazing... Tashlin like uh, cinematic directing with the shots and everything. Uh, definitely, it might be one of my favorite Looney Tunes. Honestly, I, I think it's a classic. Yeah, it's, it, it really is top notch, and it's, it's to me, it's right up there as one of the best World War II shorts. You know, it's right up there with the, you know, the Fuhrer's face as just amazing shorts. And but yeah, it's, it's, it's def definitely one I wished he did something like with Tokyo Jokyo. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that one anyway. <laughs> We have to unfortunately um, tick that box off soon. But next up, the impatient patient. I gotta admit, I didn't think too much of it. I, I, you know, had some laughs. I thought it was fine. But what's again, my good friend Devin Baxter pointed out the backgrounds, and then you can, see, and then the backgrounds which you can, you can see in the new restoration. I'm just floored away. It's just, it's just amazing, you know, by uh, by Hilberman, and. It's almost the star of the show, but thankfully here it doesn't overshadow what's happening you know, elsewhere in the cartoons. You know, the gags work, the timing's great, but it's just like uh, like the Maurice Noble backgrounds we're going to get much later with Chuck Jones. It's just a feast for the eyes, sort of like a cherry on top, really. I mean, what, what are your thoughts on um, this one? You know, I, I really actually uh, love this one. Um, like you said, amazing uh, Hilberman, Dave Hilberman backgrounds, uh, really great soundtrack, and... Uh, um, like I said, with Ducktators, it's a very cinematic cartoon in terms of the shots and the angles. And the best 
parodies of horror films or stories in animation, which is usually considered to be a lower, kind of dirtier art form that's supposed to make you laugh. If it's not genuinely scary, it doesn't do the job, and you're not gonna be shocked at it. But this cartoon is genuinely terrifying at times, and this uh, is the same for like Satan's Waiting, other terrifyingly funny Warner cartoons. It's like I think it works really well. It's 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 it's, it's a classic in my opinion. One of McCabe's best. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's not gonna end up being my favorite per se but i i have definitely gained a new appreciation for it let me put it put it that way the the next one sadly we can we've only got this really low quality print which is for the daffy duck Roo, which features one of the best daffy duck intros i've ever seen it's just the animation the timing the music works perfectly and sure some of the gags later on are not exactly politically correct but i think some part of it's pretty funny especially when daffy uses his butt to hit the the drums and, and all that stuff later but yeah it, for what it is it's pretty solid what are your thoughts on that one oh no i it's it's um it's one of my favorites it's another one of those cartoons i only grew up watching the redrawn front of and then i saw the black and white copy and i was just amazed i was floored at that thing it's another personal favorite cartoon overall it's like one of my go-to's um, really funny animation in this one. Uh, John Carey, as usual, kind of the star. Uh, Art Davis uh, is doing some early stuff here, which is mildly interesting. And it's a gorgeous uh, cartoon for uh, Carl Stalling, too. And, of course, Dave Hilberman doing amazing backgrounds. Uh, sadly, does have some not-so-politically-correct gags. But, uh, no, yeah, it's a classic. It's it's one of my favorites. And also very Tashlin-like in terms of the shots and the angles. Very cinematic. I think it's a great one. And then we got Confucians of a Nazi Spy, which is another childhood favorite of mine. And, you know, revisiting this one later on as an adult, I, I guess I appreciate different things this time around. I mean, you know, the stupid spot gag section in the beginning, you know, with the those puns and it's, it's like, okay, whatever. You know, long arm of the law. Okay, we get it. We get it, you know. Uh, but I find myself appreciating, again, the backgrounds, as I mentioned probably way more times than I should have in the commentary. But... Even just Mel Blake's performance when he um, when he plays the missing links and then plays the missing links disguising himself as Porky, it's it's genius. Just the way it was done, um, it's an okay cartoon, uh, you know, one that I don't mind watching. And despite the title, there's only I think two or three references to the war, and that's pretty much it. But yeah, it's all right. It's not too bad. What are your thoughts on this one? Um, you know, I, I actually, uh, don't like this one as much as I do the other McCabe shorts. I hate how it opens with, like, these awful gags that no one even cares about. If that was cut off, I would appreciate this cartoon a lot more. Though the underscore for those gags is Hey Doc. That's a Cab Calloway song. And it's an amazing bit of Carl Stalling music there. Um, and the fact that Mel Blanc can play, play a character talking to a Mel Blanc character is great. And then he does the part where he's imitating a character that he voices too later on, which is amazing. You know, it speaks levels about his skill. Um, some really amazing timing and animation and great voice acting as usual with Mel Blanc dominant Warner cartoons. But no, it's just not uh, outright funny. Which is what, of course, you're expecting when you watch one of those cartoons. So, no, it's not one of my favorites, but my god, the animation, voice acting, timing especially is amazing. Phenomenal. Top notch. Mm. Oh, exactly. But so, so you didn't appreciate the long arm of the war joke in the beginning and <laughs> all that stuff? <laughs> Don't even remind me of that. <laughs> uh, then you got uh, Hop and Go, which I don't know if this was. Uh, McCabe's attempt at creating his own character before, of course, he was drafted off to the war. But, you know, you got this kangaroo, which you, you'd think could be one of my favorite characters, being Aussie and all, all that. But, um, you know, voiced, voiced by Pinto Colvin, you know, it's, it's, it's a, nice, a nice idea where, you know, you got this these two smart-ass bunnies getting him to, you know, jump and, and all that. You know, is, is, it, is it a solid short? Look, it's okay. I like it. But... Is it memorable? Not really. I mean, even if McCabe's st st stuck around, 
and did more shorts with this character. I don't think this character would have taken off. It, it, it's, it kind of looks like Conrad, to be honest, with, the, with, the, with the, to, the top and even the voice actor, but that's just me. But what, what are your thoughts on Hop and Go? I don't really care for this one. It's got amazing music, great Pinto Kovac voice, Kangaroo. Um, I like the animation, and I like the dynamic that this kangaroo has with these bunnies. I would have liked to see them in more shorts, and you might be right about McCabe trying to make this his star character that sadly, obviously, didn't become a reality. But some bright spots, not a favorite. I'm not going to revisit anytime soon over, like, Daffy Duckaroo, but it, it, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, it, it's okay. And what's not okay is his last short before we went to the war, which, which we did in the commentary, which I know we're already weary of having to just quickly revisit it, which is Tokyo Jokyo, which is basically a spot gag short done from the, the, the Japanese side where it's like we discovered their, their newsreel. I, I just think the idea is genuinely great, but the execution is just a hate-filled mess with some nice animation and backgrounds, but... No, no. This one, this one's for completists only who need to see everything. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, geez, geez, uh, um, the animation is a wonderfully solid. Art Davis, you know, Phil Monroe, even a Disney guy, like I mentioned in the commentary, Ray Patton, um, the usual mainstays from the uh, McCabe unit. No, I don't care for the story uh, and the gags in this one. They're not. They, I know they were supposed to come across as funny. Maybe they did in 1943 and, you know, later on. But 2021, no, this is not going to fly. It's it's. It didn't even make me smile. It was just painful. No, it's yeah, definitely one totally of the worst. Totally, totally agree. So moving on from, from that one, because I know that's what we both wanted to. So that, those are his shorts. I mean, he, of course, gets drafted off to war. In fact, in Tokyo Joker, sorry to mention that one once again, but you can see in the titles, even says Corporal, like you can see that he was um, he was given his title already by the time that his last cartoon was, was done. So after that, yeah, he goes to the, the war and yeah. He, he he does the, the the you know fights the good fight like he's I believe he was in like some sort of an army training film unit. Uh yeah, I was uh, also he uh, did some work on the first motion picture unit, uh, which uh, was headed by uh, Rudy Ising. A lot of great guys pass through there. Uh, if a Warner guy uh, disappears from the credits around forty two forty three, they usually went to the first motion picture unit. Uh, I know off the top of my head, Phil Monroe also went there. Uh, Norm McCabe, of course. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, he did that. He did an odd film uh, after the Army called Honesty is the Best Policy. An interesting cartoon um, with some really odd, odd lineup of animators. You've got like Phil Monroe, uh, Cal Dalton, uh, Emery Hawkins, uh, all kinds of, you know, just like an all-star lineup, but it's it's not really a memorable cartoon. According to this, the, the article here, after World War II, by law, servicemen were able to be rehired at their old jobs, but there was no place to put McCabe. And I, I think that's kind of sad. I mean, I mean, granted, yes, the the stuff that they were putting out by this time was really good. You, you know, you have Tashel in there and you know, Clamplet, Clampet, and everything. So I just think it's just a shame because I think McCabe could have really developed his own thing and i think he was as the cartoons progressed he was getting to a place where he might have been considered one of, one of the greats yeah i mean i generally agree i hear that said a lot you know that he didn't have enough time to develop his own style i would have liked to see him stay but on the other hand if he did stay then there wouldn't be any room for frank tashlin which we wouldn't want because of yeah. course and who, we want him exactly <laughs> exactly and you know and, and uh, McCabe ended up being the longest living Looney Tunes director uh, I mean some 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 have said Rudy Levera I think he he lived longer but do we really count those to Patty Freely ones I don't think so <laughs> I'm so I guess no. the golden age, of, in terms of the golden age of Looney Tunes, yeah, McCabe was the oldest and he passed away at age of 94. So he had, as we say in Australia, he had, had good in, innings. And, and what was interesting was there was an actual 
fest film festival with his stuff being shown and he was there and he was just embarrassed you know, by he's like oh no no i don't want to see this sort of stuff and i guess some of it might be a little bit embarrassing because let's face it most of his output contains a lot of uh right you know racially insensitive content and some of it even hateful you know in terms of japanese i mean i you know i get it at the time they were the enemy and you know there was this context there but you know i i, I sort of feel for the guy but yeah he, he kept on working he just kept on kept on working which i gotta admire you know even though he didn't end up going back to to waters because there was no room for him he still did stuff which is great yeah i mean he was he was uh, up in the 90s he was like a sheep sheep timer on uh you know, all those uh, Spielberg uh, revivals, you know, Animaniacs, uh, Sylvester and Tweety Mysteries. Um, he directed one, at least one Tiny Toons cartoon. Uh, I think it's called Lifeguard Lunacy, which is kind of interesting. I don't know if that particular cartoon is any good. But uh, yeah, he, he kept on working with these characters later on. He did work on, you know, Daffy Duck's Quack Busters and did some stuff for Greg Ford there later in the 80s. Uh, you know, he lived a good life. He did a lot of great Warner Cartoon stuff way after the original studio shut down. Um, great stuff with the, you know, the Pink Panther animation there at the Patty Freeling and all those wonderful cartoons that are criminally underrated. But, uh, no, he, oh, yeah. uh, he did a lot of great stuff. I admire him. Yeah. Now, also, my good friend S.C. McPeter wants to say a few words on Norm McCabe. Like other short-lived directors at Warner Brothers... Norm McCabe's cartoons are very interesting. He first picks up where Clampett had left off doing shorts that sideline Porky, like Who's Who at the Zoo. But then he no longer has to constantly use Porky and does a short like Daffy Star and Exposure, in which he really puts emphasis on the character and directs a very memorable short. Then after that, he begins to settle in doing more wise guy stuff and character conflicts in doing more, finding his wise guy gags in hobby horse laughs and finding character conflict in Go for Goofy. Then after this, he gets... Layout and background painter Art Hilberman, who begins doing these really great backgrounds that build on more to what McCabe was doing, and he begins to really find himself doing shorts like The Daffy Duckaroo, Confusions of a Nutsy Spy, and Hop and Go. Sadly, most of his shorts feature topical World War II humor, akin to him having a very topical sense of mind. Now, he didn't really like this. He liked just doing the topical stuff, but he felt that the World War II gags were just lazy. And it's really unfortunate because, other than those, he does some really memorable stuff. If you ever watch a McCabe cartoon, there's certain, there's certain to be a gag you like, except for his final moment, which I'm sure you all know since you're watching on this video. And it really is unfortunate that he had to edit on such a really bad one, one of the worst the studio ever did. Yeesh. Exactly. So, just to sum it up, you know... We're not going to see these, I think, in any sort of uh, Blu-ray set anytime soon, given the political nature of it, of a lot of them. Uh, like, you know, but it'd be, it'd be nice to see if, if, the, if through Warner Archive they could release this stuff on one Blu-ray, which can easily fit. You know, eleven cartoons plus two he co-directed, but I think that's wishful thinking, to be honest. So, but what can you do? But just to to sum it up, yeah, I think. Uh, you know, if you only had more time, we could have seen something great. But as you said, we wouldn't have had Tashland. So it's like, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's that's the thing. I'm very excited about this. You guys can't see my face, but I am very much so smiling because uh, I don't know how many of you watch my channel. But for a long time, I was planning on a series of videos called The World's Greatest Yo-Yo, where I was going to discuss Tashland's cartoons and death one at a time. Uh, life prevented me from doing that. All kinds of stuff happened. I don't have the time for that anymore. But he remains my favorite uh, Warner cartoon director and one of my favorite film directors. And I am very much so excited to see that he's coming back and to do some of the greatest cartoons of all time. So, yep. get ready. <laughs> exactly. And we will do a similar video like this for Tashlin as well. So, but McCabe, I've got to say... You know, I may not have liked all your work, but I still appreciated it, and it was good to see all of them finally for this uh, series. I mean, not so much Tokyo Jokyo, but that's okay. It's 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 off the list. So, yeah, that'll, that'll do it for this video. So thanks very much for uh, watching, guys, and until next time, take care.
See ya. That's all, folks.